Who is he then? Our friend here. Look, this is all a fuss about nothing. Well, I got a phone call, isn't that right, Miss Willis? Uh, yes. Um, have you met you two? Um, of course they haven't. Well, I'm not to know, am I? I mean, are you a regular caller, Mr...? He came to see me. He's staying at the motel. Oh, I see. So that's it. That phone is working, I take it? Yes. Oh, I see. We caught you at an awkward moment. You've got a heck of a cheek. Look, sweetheart, we're standing out there after ringing this flat, shouting your name right the way across the landing, and suddenly our friend here gives his permission for you to open the door. Now, is that the way you normally carry on, Mr...? He was... he was doing a drawing of me. I... I was posing for him. He's a very chatty fella, isn't he? I'm sorry, sir, I didn't quite catch the name. Mr Howes. Mr Howes? Oh, I see. You're not on Christian name terms, then. Well, here he is in your flat, locked in for safety, practising a bit of artistry, and all the time calling you Miss Parker. Now, I do call that civil. Clifford Howes. Clifford Howes. Well, that's all I asked. I mean, I only want to help. What do you do for a living, Mr Howes? I'm a, a representative. For? Artist materials. Oh, I see. Yes, I get the picture. It's uh, by way of a demonstration. Is that right, sir? Uh, sort of. Look, it's there if you feel you must. Hmm. Very nice, too. You know, I'd say, although I'd only be guessing, mind you, that you'd done quite a bit of this sort of thing, Mr. House. Over the years? Hmm. Knew it. Yeah, there's something there, all right. You got anything to tell me about this, Emma? No. Pity that. Might have made life easier in the long run. Still, there's always the hard way. Let's have your story again, Miss Willis. You've seen him down there? Uh, yes. Since? Various times over the last week. Agree with that, would you, Mr. Hans? I, I might have been. But you're not sure? Not how often. Oh, I see. You make a bit of a hobby of it, do you? Standing up there, looking up at windows. Is all this necessary? I've got a feeling it is. Did you invite him here? Uh, no, yes. she... Get to sort it out amongst yourselves and let me have the truth, would you? She didn't. Oh, I see. You called on the off chance. What for? That's personal. Personal? That's an interesting choice of words, that. Personal. Do you know the dictionary definition of that? Peculiar to the person. Is that what you meant? Peculiar? No. Leave him alone. Look, does it occur to you that you might be very lucky to be standing there able to say that? How long have you been in your present job? I don't have to answer these questions. Hmm, very true. But the funny thing is, most people don't seem to mind, Mr Howes. You've got form, haven't you? No. Done time. You've no right. No, but I can get myself the right. And you know that, don't you, Mr. Howe? I haven't... I haven't done anything. It's true I wasn't invited here. I came here because... Because? Oh, nothing. Now, we're going to have to do better than that, aren't we? Because, you see, I've got enough to go on. Miss Willis here has had us out three times. Now, you'd stand by that, wouldn't you, Miss Willis? Uh, yes. And what about you? What are you going to stand by? Isn't there some way... Do we have to take this any further? I think that we do. It's worth a visit to the station, wouldn't you say, Mr Howes? Right. Get your stuff together. We're not going to have any fuss or bother, are we? No. You wearing anything under that? Why? You think you'd have checking it out? It's a you? straight question. No, I'm not. And it's got nothing to do with anything. Remember, you said that, won't you? Might be worth looking back on. Right, come along, Mr. Howes. I knew I was right. Right about what? Well. There have been times when you and Jane, and I'm sure the police, have had doubts about me. Oh, you could tell by the very tone they used to me on the telephone. Nothing you could complain about but doubts. And I've proved them wrong. There was someone. Well, you can chalk it off as a little triumph, can't you?
morning. Good morning, Mr Hawkins. You're an early bird. Well, at nine o'clock. I usually done half day's work by now. Yes, well, you'll find things rather different in an office. Uh, how are you settling in? Eh? Uh, with the reeds. Oh, you mean the house? It's all right. I've got my own room, everything. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, well, Mr. Reed thought you might like to make a start on the filing. We've got a bit behindhand, so there's plenty to keep you busy. That's good. There you are. Sort through that lot and see what you make of them. Well, it's quite simple. I should begin by filing the odd letters and invoices in the appropriate files. Oh. Well, for instance, this is an invoice that refers to Mr. Sedgley's account with us. Now, if you go through the files, you'll find the one that belongs to him, and you just slip this inside. Then you file the whole thing away in those box files over there under S. Understand? I suppose it'd take a bit of getting used to, don't it? Oh, you'll soon pick it up. If you want to know anything, just ask me. Thanks, Mrs. Bitter. Do you like sweet? What? Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Hawkins. I make a point of never eating between meals. Morning, Diane. Um, sorry I'm late, Mr. Hunter. You're all right. Yeah, I didn't sleep too well, but I'll be okay once I get going. Uh, Diane. Yeah? I uh, hear that Benny is leaving Haywood Farm. Well, he's already left. Is Mr. Lawton going to manage on his own? Well, I expect so once he gets reorganised. I don't worry him unnecessarily, but uh, if he's got problems purely from the practical point of view, then perhaps I ought to get in touch and find out what his position is as regards the stuff he provides us with. Well, why don't you give him a ring? Yes. Yes, then perhaps I'd better. I don't know what to do, Mr. Hunter. <laughs> what about? Well, it's a regular nine o'clock breakfast order, but there's no sign of him, and his bed hasn't been slept in either. You know, you are not making much sense. Whose bed? Well, that Mr. Howes. Well, I thought he might have checked out and somebody had forgotten to tell me, but his luggage is still there. He wouldn't forget that, would he? Well, it's odd, but he could have stayed the night with friends or something. Don't worry about it. Sort itself out. Yes, Mr. Hunter. I'm rather busy at the moment. And I'm starting interviews in about ten minutes or so. Well, it's so urgent, I suppose I must. Send him in. Come in. Good morning. How can we help you? Good morning, sir. You Mr. Hunter, the manager? That's right. Uh, we're the locals, Heathbury. We? I've got a colleague out in reception. We need to search one of your chalets. I have the signed authorization of the occupant. Mr. Howes? That's right, sir. What's happened? Mm, he's coming before the magistrate this morning. On what charge? Well, we're still in the process of determining that, sir, but unlawful entry. Lord. 
He seems to do an ordinary sort of person. Mm, quite. Uh, didn't you know anything about this, sir? <laughs> Why should I? Well, it's just that a member of your staff was involved, and I wondered if word might have got around. Oh, not to me it hasn't. Who was it? Miss Parker. Diane? Y yes, Miss Diane Parker. It was her flat he broke into. You've had him in custody all night? Yes, sir. What was the motive, do you know? Mm, we're still in the process of determining that. Not burglary, then? Unlikely. Well, I've already seen her this morning. She didn't say a word. Mm. Well, I'd say, sir, and this is strictly off the record, mark you, that uh, she might prove, should we say, uncooperative. You can't mean that. Well, she's a, got a sympathetic nature, Miss Parker, easily played upon. And I think that he, uh, Mr. Howes, that is, had time to do just that before we got there. Well, who called you in, then? I can't go into that at the moment, sir. I see. Is it all right, then, if we search through his things? Yes, yes, of course. I'll uh, ring through to reception and they'll let you have a pass key. Thank you very much, sir. Ah, there you are, young Benny. Is that in all right? Yeah, thanks. Uh, that's the ticket. Morning, Miss Felling. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Excuse me, Mr. Reed. Um, I would like a word with you in private, if you can spare a moment. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Benny, yes, wonder if you take this catalogue over to the warehouse for me. Mr. Jenkins is expecting it. Mr. Jenkins? Yes. Now then, what's the matter? Well, it's about Mr. Hawkins. Yes, well, you, you mustn't expect too much from him, you know. After all, it, it is his first day. I suppose he's been mucking about with the filing, has he? Oh, it's nothing to do with his work, Mr. Reed. Naturally, I shan't expect miracles. He'll just have to be given time to get used to things. Oh, what is it then? Well, I hardly know how to put it. Try. Well, it's that suit of his, Mr. Reed. The <sighs> smell. It reeks of mothballs. <laughs> And in this heat, and the, the office being so small... <laughs> yes, well, you can think yourself lucky that he didn't turn up in his working cords. I know what you're talking about, Miss Spedding. I had exactly the same complaint from my wife, only she put it a bit more strongly. Don't worry, I'll have a tactful word with him. Oh, I would be grateful. Apart from that, how are you finding him? Well, very well, really. I mean, uh, he's a nice, cheerful lad, nothing cheeky about him. No, well, he'll settle down. Meanwhile, I'd like you to give him as much help as you possibly can. Oh, I'll try, but well, he's had no experience at all, has he? I don't think he knows a file from... From a hacksaw. No, well, anyway, it, it's, it, it's, uh, it's very strange, and you know, at the moment for him, and it'll say it's difficult for you too, so you'll find a little bit extra in your pay packet from now on. Oh, thank you, Mr. Reed. That is kind. Yes, well, I think you'll earn it. I thought you might have said something. That's all. There was no point. That's fair enough, but the police have got the idea that you are not going to be cooperative, and I'd think very carefully about that if I were you. Look, Mr Hunter, it's just a lot of fuss about nothing. That is not the way they see it. They see things that aren't there. That's unlikely. They have to prove things. And for that, they need help, and it should be given. He's just a pathetic little man. Well, all the same. Why did they have to search his belongings? Procedure. It makes me sick, it really does. Have you met him? Have you met Mr Howes? Yes. Does he strike you as a monster, does he? I don't know what they're trying to prove. He needs help. Maybe that's what he'll get. Well, if I have anything to do with it, you will. Well, find Mr Jenkins all right, then? Yeah, it's a big place, isn't it? Yeah, you haven't seen the half of it. I'll take you over it when we've got some time. You know... I'd like to work in that place. Well, you will eventually. You'll get experience in all the departments. I think I'll just see if there's anything needed in the shop, Mr. Reed. They were short of till rolls yesterday. Oh, yes. Yes, fine. That's a nice suit you're wearing, Benny. Yeah, it's my best. The one I buy for wedding. <laughs> Seems rather a shame, though, to spoil it wearing it to work, doesn't it? We ain't got nothing else, you know, nothing that'd be right. Well, I was thinking we'll have to fit you up with something. Wait, you mean by new one? Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll take you down to my tailor's and we'll get one made to measure. But meanwhile, you'll have to have something off the peg that'll suit you. That, that costs a lot of money, will not it? Well, don't you worry about that. I'll see to that. Well, I'd rather pay myself. No, don't be silly. I reckon I owe you a few birthday presents. We'll set you up like a lord. We'll buy you a new overcoat and all sorts of things. Now, what do you say to that? 
Thanks, Mr. E. Well, you could look a bit happier about it. Well, I ain't never had a lot of clothes. It, we do seem waste of money. Well, you're my son. I want to be proud of you. I don't want to see you going around peachy, looking like something that's been left out in the rain and smelling like I don't know what. Smell? Don't smell, do I? Yeah, mothballs. Very strong. And they can be pretty overpowering in this weather, I can tell you. Sorry, but... Well, well, Mrs. always say it keeps clothes fresh. Yeah, depends what you mean by fresh. Yeah, but better I get out in the garden tonight, hadn't I? Yes, I, I think that would make Miss Spedding very happy. How much longer are you going to be, Mr. Lawton? Can't you find something else to do for the next half hour? I want to get on with this cake. All right. I mind what you're doing. I don't want flour all over this ledger. Can't think why you don't take all that into the parlour like Mrs. Reed used to do. Cos I don't work like Mrs. Reed, that's why. No, you don't. What's that supposed to mean? Well, look at the figures. Easy to see where she left off and you began. Haven't got much of a system, have you? It's done me well enough for all these years. Can't think what the taxman makes of it, I'm sure. You can't manage your own le ledgers. I hate to think how poor old Ben is going on over at Reed's with all that figure work and percentages and adding up to do. If you'd keep quiet for five minutes, I might be able to concentrate. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sure. I told you about Bert ringing up, did I? Eh? He says he's very sorry, but he can't manage to get down today. He's got to go to the market with the farmer. They're looking out for a couple more heifers. So he's not coming. How am I supposed to manage? Well? You might have told me before I got settled down to all this. I'll have to go over to the packing shed now. There are four orders to get out before dinner. Well, I'd give you a hand, but I'm up to my eyes. I shall have to get some permanent help. It's no good. I can't carry on like this. It's just not on. I can't manage everything on my own. You should have thought of that. Oh, heck. Well, I can't answer it. My hands are all over flour. Hello, Haywood Farm. Mr Lawton. Speaking. Morning, Hunter here. Eh? David Hunter, Crossroads Motel. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Mr Hunter. I, I didn't recognise your voice. How are you? Fine. Getting on the treat. Good. I was wondering how you'd... Managed to cope without Benny's help? Oh, there's no problem there. I've got a couple of men putting in the time, you know. Um, that's if you're worried about getting the orders on time. Well, I was wondering if you were able to cope without Benny. Oh, you'll find that everything will be delivered on time, Mr Hunter. The same as always. Good. That's quite a load off my mind. We'll see you today, then. Today? With the order I gave you. Oh, yes, of course, the... The raspberries and the lettuces. Oh, well, don't you worry. Uh, the van's already loaded. You can expect us before lunch. Good. Look forward to seeing you. Bye. Cheerio, sir. Van's already loaded? Not a very good liar, are you? Shut up, will you? I'm trying to think. How are you going to get the raspberries picked and packed and the lettuces crated before dinner time? Much less drive it over to the motel. Well, for a start, you're leaving that blooming cake and coming with me. You can make a start on the picking. Well, I shall want extra, mind. Anything you like, so long as you keep your mouth shut and we keep this place moving. Beginning to realise how much he did now, aren't you? You made the biggest mistake of your life when you let that lad go.
Hello, I'm Pete Baker, and I'm here to tell you about an exciting new project we've developed. It's unlike many of the businesses on this site, and I'll explain why in just a moment. But first, I'd like to explain how we got here and why we believe this service is unique and more than worthy of your investment. Commercial radio in the UK dates back to the early 1970s and was designed to be independent competition to the BBC's local radio network, which began in 1967. These local commercial stations were generally created by local businesses who launched a station for their city, each quite distinct from the other, but united in the provision of local pop music radio with less speech content than their BBC rivals, but still maintaining a local identity and feel for each station. Over the years, big business became involved and shifted the emphasis away from service and local in favor of corporate interests. This led to a series of mergers and acquisitions. Soon, what used to be known as independent local radio was neither independent nor local, with just four companies owning the majority of the stations and much of the output being broadcast centrally. This has created lowest common denominator radio, operated to appeal to most people most of the time and using a tight playlist of current top 20 hits played in rotation. It's fair to say many of them are Radio 1 with adverts, nothing of local interest and little for anyone over 20. Our proposal is simple and innovative. We're bringing back real local radio, back to the UK, by establishing a network of 20 online stations. Programming will be delivered from a central location, but we will not broadcast the same content across our network simultaneously. Each station will be unique and separate, by making our stations available online via social media and apps, we'll be giving our audience wide and free access to our service on platforms they're already using to provide their entertainment. People rarely have an FM radio with them on their travels, but they always have their phone or iPad, so we can reach listeners through the most convenient and modern means, unconstrained by the old AM or FM routes. Of course, there are already radio stations on the internet, but almost without exception, they are internet relays of output from FM services or amateur hobbies based in bedrooms. Nobody has embraced the concept of creating a professional network of radio stations exclusively internet-based. We will be the first. Our family of stations is designed to have particular appeal to listeners aged 40 plus. Now, that's not to say younger people wouldn't love what we do, but we're aiming at an audience who remember how local radio used to be and everything that came with it. We have trademarked 15 names from the original independent local radio network, and we plan to revive their spirit, serving the whole area with a variety of programs and specialist music programs too. So, however old you are, we'll have something just for you. We've prepared a detailed business plan to explain everything in detail and you're welcome to download this. We also have comprehensive cash flow forecasts for a five-year period, which illustrates the way this will work financially. If you have any questions, just email us, or we're available on the phone from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. We've invested a considerable amount of time and money to bring the project this far, but we need your investment to make this happen. We're offering some great promotional rewards as our way of saying thank you. Many businesses on this site are new products, but we think this is a back to the future idea, reclaiming an idea from the past which worked brilliantly by making it dynamic and relevant to today's radio audience. Thank you very much for watching. Again, if you want any further information or you have any questions, please get in touch. We're waiting for your call.